What's up, all my fellow collectors of all things collectible? Welcome to another edition of Figure This, Figure That, the Don's Figure Chat. Okay, today we're doing a Grail of Grails for me. It's the first movie that was stamped into my memory from an early age. This and First Blood because I'd read the book over a hundred times. It was so dope to see the movie come out. But then this figure, I mean, I remember when we first seen it and at the news station in the beginning, they were talking about the violence and stuff in South Africa and South Africa this, South Africa that. And of course we were going through all the sanctions and uh, censorship and all of that at the time so we weren't really in the mainstream media south africa as a whole we felt like the the land that time forgot when we were kids so yeah this piece here is just spectacular die cost yes 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 it's die cost so it's going for a close-up of that face plate so that's a face plate he arrives with with uh everything all lacquer shiny and bright and new you come down articulation is not too bad that's what you'd expect of a die cast figure uh, especially a figure like this of such uh, intricacy if that's the right word to use comes with a crotch grabber stand with the ocp logo one he comes with this robocop name plate which I'll show you the fancy tricks that thing does just now. This is the art box. Got a bit of a Tron feeling going on. Remember the movie Tron? With those white outlines around the figure there. You come down, it's the MM MMS202 D04 Robocop Diecast 1 6 scale action figure. He comes with some hands. He's got two flexible finger hands. One he's wearing, two fists, one he's wearing, and the data spike. This is the plastic uh, auto that he carries in his thigh holster. At the moment, he's got the die cast one in which the instruction manual actually advises you to do, you know. Plus, the plastic one is easier to hold in these art articulated fingers because he, he doesn't come with a trigger hand, per se. Come back down. You get the battle damage cowl. The battle damage breastplate. Look at the bullet holes. You see them? That's a really neat little touch, eh? Comes with the obligatory uh, instruction manual over there. This little doohickey is for taking the back plate off so you can turn on the voice activation. He comes with uh, three extra mouth plates. So the snarly one, the first one I'll use, the middle one I'll use, but that end one with his kissy face, I doubt uh, you'll see me using that in times must be when he's sipping on his baby food through a straw that's all i can think of so one of my pet peeves with this figure is you see that piston at the back it keeps slipping out of its holder <laughs> yeah you just get a lack of pose going you say ah oh, no man but uh, it's easy enough to put back in it's just a nightmare so the thigh opens up to reveal his thigh holster, which is a really, really nice touch. There you can see one of the articulated finger hands. The only shit thing about these hands is the fingers have a habit of popping out when you least expect it. And I would imagine so easy to lose. I don't actually like using them to be fair. The legs pull out at the hip to give him better articulation and better range of movement. The same with the arms. The arms pull out 
about a centimeter to give you again better range of articulation. To swap the face plates is as easy as putting on a hat. That's uh, yeah, so easy. Changing the cowls, easy. The chest plate, everything about this figure is, is, is just super, super engineered. Just remember, this is a marriage of die cast and PVC. So, I mean, it's quite a feat of engineering to get this amount of dopeness into 30 centimeters. It's really nice, eh? The only thing other than that piston is the rubber joints at the elbows. You see them there? They have an apt of uh, perishing if you don't treat them regularly with 303 wipes, well, that's what we use. Same goes with the knees. If you don't uh, 303, the rubber protection on the outside, they tend to perish. And I mean, the Ed 209, you know, the big uh, thing that they, he fights at the end of the movie. That thing, the whole dome starts deteriorating. That must have been so horrible for the people who, you know, bought it, only to find out that the bloody thing was just disintegrating before their eyes. That sucks, eh? So I've never had one of those, solely because it, it just puts me off that if I get one, you don't know Unless it's a trusted mate, you know, from the groups. You just don't know what's, uh, what's happening with the piece. And it's such a rigmarole to get your money back. Yeah, beautiful piece, eh? Beautiful, beautiful. From any angle, you can see it's old Robo. And then you see these rings here. Where are we? Over here. It's going closer, those things, they're missing from that side. Now, I can't remember if they were missing from when I had him or I've lost them somehow, but you can get spares of them. They're very few and far between, but you can get them here and there. So, yeah, I'll have to look into that. But look at him. Isn't he a beast, eh? Such a dope piece. Really is. And in this light studio, he's just bouncing at me, eh? A silver chrome. It looks like he's had a pearl candy job. You even see flashes of purple hues when the light bounces off the silver. It should have given us light up eyes. You know that band there? It should have made it light up. Was it in the movie? I can't remember. It must have been. He must have, I'm sure it had red flashing like Kit. From Knight Rider, must have had flashing lights in there. Oh, yeah. So I'll just go over the accessories again before we start getting stuck into some action poses. And then I'll show you another thing that I outsourced that goes with this figure. Uh, yeah, I'll show you that just now. So he comes with the die cast pistol crotch grabber with the OCP logo on, the Robocop nameplate, he comes with a set of fists, a set of articulated fingers and just the one data spike. This is the plastic auto which the magazine is removable and the slide pulls back. This is a battle damage cowl with the battle damage chest plate. Again, look at those bloody bullet holes, man. That's so exact, eh? It's almost like they got some small person to stand in front and shoot them as they came off the production line. <laughs> it comes with the instruction manual, the doohickey for removing the armor at the back, three extra face plates 
one snarly, one normal, and one I don't know what he's trying to do, but don't think I'll be using that. I don't think I've used it since I've had the figure, and I've had this figure for ages. It's just such a beautiful piece though, man. In any display, he rules. Everybody knows who Robocop is. Everybody, I don't care who you are, even if you live in Siberia, you'll know who Robocop is. Let's see if we can have a bit of a pan shot of the man. There we go. Here's a pan shot for you. I'm getting good at these pan shots. And yeah, let's move on to doing some dope poses. Well, I'll try and do some dope poses. So I'll leave you looking into the band of Robocop's cow. And I'll see you on the flip. All right, that's me back with our futuristic policeman. And now he's in a full on action pose. So he's drawn his weapon. The leg holster, the thigh holster is closed. And he's now ready to kick some ass. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Ready to kick some ass. So he's got the two articulated hands on. There's the one there. The other one is holding the weapon as he doesn't come with a trigger hand you've got to use the flexible finger hand and that's why they supply the plastic weapon i've changed the face plate out to a snarly face he's obviously not getting his protein in the morning and as you can see i've got him like in an action walking type pose and he holds the line quite well for a robot, you know? I think it looks quite dope. And also, if I grab this again. So remember, I was saying to you, he's got some voice activation. So we'll go in cl a bit closer and hear what he has to say. He's not saying anything. So we'll have to wait for that one to occur. Let me give you the pan shot quickly. And then I'll pause here so I can switch on the voice activation. So don't go away. I shall be right back. Okay, that's me back. And we finally got the voice activation sorted. So let's go in and listen to what those snarly face has got to say. You ready? Right. Drop the gun. You are under arrest. <laughs> Don't know why you're coming with me. Come quietly or there will be trouble. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night. Serve the public trust. Protect the innocent. Uphold the law. Even sounds like him. Stay out of trouble. I will, Robo. I will. Drop the gun. You are under arrest. I don't know why you're coming with me. <laughs> I love that, eh? It's a pity because the voice activation doesn't stay on. Uh, you turn it on. You turn it on on the, the nameplate. And it stays on for about four to five minutes. And then it turns itself off. And you have to literally take off the back plate again, switch it off and switch it back on again. So it's like primed to use a remote control. It's still a beautiful touch though, eh? Just makes this figure all the more impressive. So yeah, he's, as I say, he's got his snarly face on. Look at the detail, man. 
There you can see those rings closer up now. There's two on the left hand side there. There's supposed to be two on the right. <laughs> He's a beautiful piece, eh? Beautiful piece. So, what I did was I seen a, a docking station, a docking, the mechanical chair, going for sale in the groups, loose, but in its box. So, uh, yeah, I grabbed it and uh, I use it for my Robocop. It makes for a great display piece, eh? You'll see just now. And then there's also uh, the Battle Damage Robocop with the head sculpt that is just oh wait till you see it man wait till you see it and especially see it on this piece it just blows you out the water it's that good so as you can see you can pull him out at the hip joints and it gives you further articulation on the legs or the angle of the body it pulls out quite a bit and the same as the arms you can just see it under that arm there's a shaft about a centimeter in diameter that pulls out about a centimeter and allows you to bend the arm fold the arm things like that you can't bring it across his chest uh, it's just more for the line of the arm than anything else but still looks dope eh? You know, even when it's pulled out. And now I showed you that battle damaged breastplate and cowl. So you can imagine what it looks like on him. It looks fantastic. That's what it looks like. Fantastic. Let's try another professional director boom shot. And as we pull slowly away, Robocop comes into stark appearance. And he's just about to blast your face off. Well, oh, that's Robo for you. Come with me and there won't be any trouble. Uh, I've heard that before. Okay. Onwards and upwards to the next pose. I'm enjoying posing him. He's not an easy figure to pose. You would think he would be, eh? But to get the line right, it's, it's actually quite difficult. There you can see him at his best, eh? There's Robo. There's Robo. <laughs> oh, I love him, eh? He's such a charismatic... Char what's that word? Char charismatic. A charismatic display piece. I said it wrong then. Charismatic, yeah, charismatic display piece. And there's so much presence eh, in a display. Firstly, because of the sheen of the silver armor, the chrome armor, and then just him, you know, he takes over. He's like a Terminator. Who else? Enter Bay Batman, quarter scale, Beast of Gotham. He's got that presence, and it's the same as this guy. And I was telling you earlier that Enter Bay did a quarter scale of him, and it's just beautiful, eh? It really is. And there's some earlier editions of this from Hot Toys. They were almost like kits. You bought them, it was all in separate parts, and you put it together. I mean, separate parts. It was like torso, the two arms, the two legs, and the head. And it came with a flight pack, but they're all PVC and nowhere near the quality of this one that they released later on. Or the battle damage one with Alex Murphy that they released. But you do find him out there. And this guy that uh, bought my purple coat Joker, who got, uh, he just bought a Robocop, shame, it was his first piece, man. And it had cracked uh, rubber elbows where the rubber had deteriorated and the guy hadn't told him. I said to him, just keep a search open on Evil Bay and uh, they do pop up. Loose arms, loose legs, they, they actually do pop up. 
I said, keep your eyes open and you might get one. And I said, I'd put a search on my eBay as well. And if one comes up, I'll give him a shout. But for now, we're doing this Robo. The die cast MMS 202 D04. I'll see you on the flip. Right, so that's me back. I've now put him in his mechanical docking station. This is where he gets uh, all his directors from and where they can recharge his uh, batteries, so to speak. It's quite a bit of awesome kit in itself. It's got all these boxes that attach with wiring. It does have lights, but it doesn't light up very much. Uh, it only lights up. I don't know if you can see them. You know, those uh, white glowing things there behind. They only light those up. Uh, the chair does come away from this thing. If you just want to use the chair. I don't know how it works though. I've never done that. <clears throat> now I've got him sitting straight on the chair there. If you're going to sit him on this chair for a long period of time, it's always best to put something underneath him there because the paint sticks to the chair or the chair sticks to the paint and it uh, pulls the paint away from the thighs. So just uh, keep that in mind. His foot pedestal, that thing, does rise up and down to position his feet nice. The armrests that he's got his arms on move forward and backwards. So again, so you can position him right. This box is a fit on piece and that box is a fit on piece. You get stickers for this box like uh, cardiograms and things like that. Uh, mine are still in the, in the box. I scored this chair in the groups loose. I already had this uh, Robocop. So I thought, yeah, why not, eh? And, uh, yeah, he looks fantastic on it. You must see him in a lit-up display box of his own with uh, different colored lights going on in the background. Really looks superb, eh? So at the moment, because he's in his chair, I changed all his armor out for the battle-damaged armor. There you see it. Uh, I've changed his mouth out for the first and only time I think I'll ever use this mouthpiece. I don't know what it's supposed to be doing. I don't know if he's blowing kisses or drinking through a straw or whatnot. But yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But you can, I mean, this is a big piece, eh? This chair. Look at the highlights on Robocop. Doesn't that look amazing, eh? Yes, I love my hobby. This can transport you straight back, eh? To behind the cop shop where they've got him stored to do all his recharging and to uh, do his memory banks and load his directives. It's really, really nice. If I can turn him to the side, let me try. This is a heavy piece. There, you can see the thing that goes into the back of his head there. So it's quite uh, true to the original piece. There you can see OCP police on his helmet. And I think you'll be able to see that. No, you can't. His arms covering it. No, there it is. There it is on top of his thigh. Just over here. See it there? I mean, that's attention to detail, eh? Yeah, it really is a nice piece, eh? There you can see the rubber-jointed knees. 
that uh, perish if you don't look after them. Same as with the elbows. And uh, he's actually quite articulated for what he is. He won't win no ballet competitions like, but uh, he gets in there and he does the job of what he's supposed to do. It was very easy to get him in the sitting position. Very easy. But there's still two big pieces to add to this. And I think you'll enjoy those. But for now, let's just stare at Roby and see who blinks first. That's unfair because you wouldn't know if you blinked or not, would you? I know, childish joke. I know. I'm just trying to get you all the angles in. So the wires from the two boxes that you add fit underneath the chair. And then there's a, it looks like almost a power cable that runs from the pedestal piece, this piece, also under the chair. It's the thicker silver wire. Yeah, there you can just see it underneath there. And then that wire, and there's a wire coming from this box, also fit under the chair. But they fit with rubber grommets, and I don't want to push them all the way in because I've got a feeling they won't bloody come out. There's all the bullet holes again. You can see it now in uh, vivid detail. And there you see the rings on top of his shoulders where the two that are missing on the right hand side, so our right hand side, on his normal armor. I mean, look, you can even see the oil and stuff coming out, the bullet holes. That's amazing, eh? Really is. So yeah, all in all, a fantastic piece to add to anybody's collection, eh? Really is just cream of the crop. Wait till you see the other pieces that we're going to be adding to this whole scenario. You'll think, oh my God, why haven't I bought these before? Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> I sound like a dweeb, eh? If only my friends could see me now. But it really does look the part, doesn't it? Like he does in the movie. In this chair. Well, actually, even not in the chair, he looks part. He looks the part. Okay. Well, and he's on caster wheels. These things are caster wheels, believe it or not. So here yeah, are, all in all, a very, very dope piece. Just bear with me. I'm going to try and get a standing shot so you can see how massive this piece is. It's big, eh? When you think he's 30 centimeters, it gives you an idea of the scale of this chair. Sorry for that uh, chicky dicky camera work there. Look at the highlights shining off the silver. That's really nice, eh? I thought when it shone off uh, Superman's chrome suit under his blue suit, that looked nice. But this is a whole nother level, eh? Really is. Robert Cop is in the hoose. So we'll stop it there. I just wanted to show you the docking chair. We'll bring it in a bit further on in the video. But for now, just feast your eyes on everything that is Robo. And I'll see you on the flip. Okay, that's me back. But now you can see there's a noticeable difference. And that difference is this head sculpt 
that uh, me and a lot of other fellow collectors thought should have came with this figure with the mechanical docking chair. It actually comes with the battle damaged Robocop and Alex Murphy double pack. So what a lot of the guys done uh, is bought this head sculpt or the battle damaged Robocop with head sculpt loose so they could do this particular pose. How dope is that, eh? I mean, that's a really, really nice sculpt. And it fits this die-cast body so admirably. So admirably. And yeah, as I was saying, this should have been supplied with this whole setup. The mechanical docking chair and die-cast robo. Because the battle damage robo is predominantly PVC. But he comes with that dope head sculpt and with Alex Murphy. Look at the level of detail in the battle damage chest piece. You can see the wires underneath. And as I explained in the previous video, you can see all the oil and hydraulic fluid leaking at the bullet holes in his chest. It's really, really well done. Really well done. At the moment, he's got the two uh, flexible finger hands on so he can grip the armrests. His feet rest on the plate, which is adjustable. I can move up and down. And yeah, this is just, as I say, a magnificent piece, man. Look at him sitting there. You'd think you were in the movie. I've got a display case for one figure. I got it off Immortal Displays, uh, James Pamplin. And uh, I've got colored lights set up in there. So it changes lights, uh, color all the time. And when I had him in there with this uh, mechanical chair, yeah, oh man, what a display unit, eh? But now he's given up his seat to Lim Toy's Gunslinger. But I just might, after this review today, change him back. I'll show you the figure that this head sculpt comes from. Uh, it's part of the whole Robocop thing. So I'll do those two just now. And I'll tell you the story behind those. Uh, can you see he's got the double set of rings on his chest armor at the top there? where on the normal version for this figure uh two of them i don't know if they've broken off or dropped off with glue drying or what but uh yeah they're gone the level of detail in the neck uh necks well, what is that neck post really nice you just got to be careful when you're transferring this from the battle damage robot cop to this cop because that's that ring pulls off quite easily and if it pulls off then it's, it's actually broke do you know what i mean and look that's peter weller eh? to a t that's peter weller yeah uh, as i was saying in the beginning of the video grail of grails this piece and once you add that head sculpt yeah whole nother level eh it just looks fantastic. You can see when it goes dark, that's me out of the light studio. But uh, I have to do that so I can get the full figure in. So you'll see a noticeable difference when I move in. He seems to come alive. There we are. Yeah, so that's amazing. Eh? So lifelike. Really is a... Eh? What's that? Turn him around, you say, so you can see the back. Right, oh, this thing's on caster wheels, so that's not a problem. <laughs> There's from the side. Yeah. 
Butafal. There's the side of the head sculpt with his plug in at the back, ready to uh, recalibrate his brain. OCP, oh, they were bastards, eh? So that's the back. The level of detail is just fantastic. The level of detail they've gone to. I mean, everyone loves Robocop. Who doesn't love Robocop? I mean, he's got caster wheels. Casters. <laughs> and there's he back in position. Okay. Let's uh, move onwards and upwards and get some new poses in here. Let's go down, get the light. There we go. Pull out for the overhead pan. Golden Globes. Here I come. I might even get the Nobel Peace Prize. So yeah, he, he was a Detroit cop in the future. And OCP came up with these uh, Robocops. So they would use the brain. Anything, it's supposed to be anything salvageable from the, the person who they're going to use. And they wipe his memories clean. Uh, he had a saveable arm, but they uh, took it off, said no, nah, make him full on. So they use the spine, the cortex, and the brain, and as I said, anything else they can save. But in this case, they didn't save much, eh? And then he fights Ed, 20, Ed 209 at the end, which was his upper boss, was his brainchild. And yeah, oh, that's quite an epic fight. Nice, eh? I love this piece. The way the light bounces off him. So I'll leave you hanging like that. With the upward boom. No, we'll go for a straight boom then. And I'll see you on the flip. Okay, so I've set him up quickly with his data spike, which he uses to put into the server. Once he starts getting his memories back, he wants to know who he is and what happened to him, and they're not telling him. And he keeps getting these flashbacks of his son. And there's his son's favorite TV uh, show about a, a lone cop that uh, is, swings his gun. He's got heavy uh, trigonometry skills, you know. Turns the gun on his finger and then slips it back in the holster. And uh, Peter Weller, as Alex Murphy, was practicing this uh, in a scene from the movie. But then when he becomes Robo, uh, things start coming back to him, like little flashbacks of memories, and he gets very uh, angry, should I say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he goes a bit uh, ballistic, and then brings out his data spike, and shoves it into the main server. He also uses it as a weapon in one scene from the movie. Because as you can see, that's quite a vicious spike, eh? I wouldn't like that shoved through my abdomen. Okay, I've changed out his armor back to uh, the clean armor. I checked a couple of scenes on Google and he is with clean armor when he does use the data spike. Again, man. What a beautiful figure, eh? 
and when I pulled off the other hand with the flexible fingers, all the fingers came out, which is not a mission. It's not a biggie. They just uh, slip back in. But you can imagine how easy it is to lose one, you know, one dropped on the floor here. And it's so difficult to see. But uh, I did find it. There's no articulation in the ankles as in left or right movement. It can go up and down, but that's about it. So you can't, but you can turn the leg in the direction you want to turn it to up to 45 degrees. So that's all right. I mean, to be fair, any pose that this guy is in looks epic. Uh, you, I'm using the mechanical chair as a backdrop for this scene. It is in it. No, it's not in the scene because he goes to the main server bank. He drives there. And yeah, that's before the shit hits a fan. With Clarence Abodica. <laughs> you might, if you haven't seen the movie, you must see it. I mean, now the special effects are a bit jaded. But it's still an excellent movie, eh? For its time and for its general, it's just your yeah, top of the game, eh? So I'll just give you a couple of more shots of him. You must write in the comments what you think of him. As I say, this, this piece here is die cost. So it's no uh, Magoo. That was, used to be a term in South Africa. If the guy was a bit of a, an arse, you would say he's a magoo. But he is nice, eh? And as I say, when the light bounces off him and you catch these purple hues coming off the, off the chrome. Brilliant, eh? I don't know if I've caught any yet on the camera. I don't see when I call you the video. But yeah, you see it in person. And it's, it's special. It really is, eh? It uh, brings the figure alive. Okay, before I start getting melodramatic and praying to him, let's cut you and go in for another pose. What do you say, lads? What do you say? Lads and lasses. Read yours and I'll see yous on the flip.